So as for the southern United States, I have been to Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, New Orleans, and most recently Texas, but after watching 310 to Yuma, I think I want to go to Arizona. Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic, and on this channel, it's my job to point you in the direction of movies worth checking out. So if that interests you, definitely hit that subscribe button. And today I'm here to tell you if 310 to Yuma is worth a watch today. So in 310 to Yuma, we have Dan Evans, played by Christian Bale, and he's a Civil War veteran and a rancher who is behind on his debts. He lives on the ranch with his wife, Alice, played by Gretchen Mole, and his two sons, William, played by Logan Lerman, and Mark, played by Ben Petrie. And they are all suffering due to the harsh drought that has plagued their land. One day, Dan and his sons witness a robbery of a stagecoach by a group of outlaws led by Ben Wade, played by Russell Crowe. Both of them come face to face with each other, but Ben lets Dan and his boys live and instead take their horses, leaving them stranded with the wounded stagecoach guard, Byron Mac McElroy, played by Peter Fonda. Rest in peace. Back in town, after Ben and his crew split their winnings, Dan and Ben come face to face again at the local saloon. But this time, Dan helps the local law enforcement capture Ben Wade, and in an attempt to gain some money to save his family, volunteers to take Ben Wade to the town of contention and get him on the train to prison. The 310 to Yuma. So is 310 to Yuma still worth the watch today? Absolutely. Even if you don't like westerns, even if you haven't seen a single western, I really do think that you will enjoy this movie because for a couple reasons. Number one, this is a movie about the bad guy. Like Training Day and like Gangs of New York, the protagonist isn't the one with all the personality, charm, and spunk. This movie, like those ones, all the personality is in the villain, Ben Wade, played by Russell Crowe. And like Alfred Hitchcock once said, the better the villain, the better the movie. And what makes Russell Crowe as Ben Wade such a great villain in this movie is that he does absolutely terrible things. One, he kills innocent people, he robs stagecoaches, and there's no woman that is out of touch for him, no matter if she's married, no matter if she's widowed, it doesn't matter to him. If he finds her attractive, she's his. So for those reasons, you hate him. But he is so charming, charismatic, intelligent, has proper manners, and he's extremely smart in battle that you want to be on this guy's team. Even though you hate him, you just want this guy to be on your side. And in actuality, he kind of embodies the male fantasy, right? Gets to do what he wants, gets to sleep with whoever he wants to, gets to travel, doesn't have a care in the world for anything. That's really the male fantasy. But the perfect foil for Ben Wade's character comes in Dan Evans, played by Christian Bale. And unlike Russell Crowe's Ben Wade, Christian Bale, on the other hand, is moral, is just and is honest. However, this is the Wild West, and the Wild West eats those people alive. You know, he fought in the Civil War, he did his duty, he fought for his country, and how is he rewarded for it? He has a limping leg, and he gets fucked over by the drought and the coming railroad. There's always the railroad in these movies, right? And on top of that, his wife is looking at him and going, you know what, like, I married a man who was coming home from the war, but you know what, this man is failing to take care of me and the children. So how much longer can she take? This man's life is just absolutely in the shitter, but he still sticks with his morals. Put those two characters together and they couldn't be more different in terms of morality, but what's great about it is that these two characters, they do come to an understanding. They're able to relate to each other even though they could not be further apart. Now when the movie starts and they meet each other, they obviously don't like one another. But the movie does a great job at revealing more and more of the characters as the film goes along. You know, on the trip to the train station, this movie, I'm going to reference Shrek here, it feels like it's peeling back layers of an onion, right? So you understand, okay, Dan Evans is this, and Ben Wade is this. And then they start talking, and then you realize, oh, there's a lot more to Ben Wade than meets the eye. Oh, there's actually a lot more than Dan Evans that meets the eye. And they start to reveal more and more of the character as the film goes along, which allows you to go, okay, I'm getting really invested into this story. I'm liking these characters. I'm learning more as the film goes along. The story's getting more intense and we're getting more emotionally connected to the characters along this journey. Now, I have talked to some people out there who found this movie quite boring in the beginning. Now, I should mention that, of course, at the beginning, not everything is revealed about the characters right away. So if you're a fan of movies that you need to have the characters completely fleshed out by the first act and then the movie can get going, then this might not be the movie for you. 
but I like that they don't reveal everything about the characters right away and along the journey you start to understand and you're starting to see different motivations, different backstories, and the characters get richer and deeper as the film goes along, which I really, really enjoyed. So this movie is a tale of two characters that couldn't be further apart in terms of morality, but they are able to come to a certain understanding. They're able to relate to one another and we're able to relate to both characters as well. But another reason why I really like this movie is that I haven't actually seen that many Westerns, right? I haven't seen High Noon, I haven't seen Stagecoach, I haven't seen uh, Outlaw Josie Wales, but I have seen Good, Bad, and the Ugly, and I've seen a couple other Westerns. This movie, being made in 2007 and having actors like Russell Crowe and Christian Bale, I think this is the perfect entry point into the genre of westerns for people who haven't actually really watched westerns in the past because it's not like going back and watching a movie from 1939 and going like oh like this is going to be my entry point into this genre well 310 yuma is contemporary enough it's modern enough it has actors that we recognize but it is a story that has deep roots into westerns and it has all the western hallmarks you know it's got gunfights it's got stagecoach robberies we got cool cowboys with cowboy hats we got cool saloons and old rustic towns this is like westerns greatest hits so if you're new to westerns this is a good one to start with because i'm giving 310 yuma a four out of five you have all the greatest hits of western movies from the past and you have two really strong characters in a great character battle throughout the entire movie. It's action-packed, it's emotional, it's grand. This is a great movie. I can't recommend it enough. So anyways, guys, tell me down in the comment section down below, what is your favorite Western movie? And if you're new to this channel and you want to see more videos like this, definitely hit like and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Take care.